right there at the top, Bugga, Clarity G, Stretch. No surprise there. He's in the finals, though. Man, He's the one that won game. Stretch. He already knew he was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drop, 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 drop on him, drop on him. Yeah, Coming hard. Above me, above me, one above me. Oh. Two down, two down, two down. Stretch is going to take the high ground. They have no idea right now. They're up above. Stretch is so good in these clutch situations, you almost never see him lose them. Stretch is just an amazing individual. Not signed by an org yet, but rumor has it there may be some announcements coming soon. Keep an eye out for that. Stretch is a big up and comer, that's for sure. Our family is four kids, my husband and I. Joe is the youngest of four, and his oldest brother is 10 years older than he is. So we've been in West Bloomfield for about 26 years now. It's a really great location for raising kids, great schools great parks and lots of things that you can expose your kids to, and it's a great city. Honestly, like, the town's pretty boring. You don't really, there's not much to do. There's nothing here. It is a nice place, but there's not too much to do, I would say. A really, really boring, like, small town. I just always wanted to play video games, kind of. Just, that's all I really wanted to do. So Joe was really the typical fourth child. As he was growing up, he didn't really need to do much for himself because he had three siblings doting on him and speaking for him. So Joe was a big observer. When he would watch the older boys play like their guitars, he would pick up a guitar and he would be serious about it at a young age. Like he looked serious about it. He saw what these guys were doing and he wanted to do exactly what they were doing and he wanted to do it as well as them. So he always had a guitar with him. He just walked around with it. I actually thought he was gonna become like a really good musician, but video games were becoming more and more important to him and music was kind of falling away. It started probably when I started playing Guitar Hero with my brothers. My older brother would force me to play Guitar Hero on like the hardest difficulty. And so he would follow up with, I want to play Guitar Hero too, or let me do this, let me play Call of Duty. He would be playing on expert level. And at first we thought he was just goofing around. And then his brothers were like, no, he doesn't miss. He was like, I'll play through the fire and flames. No problem. It was crazy. He was really good. I mean, it just kind of felt pretty normal. But now I look back and I'm like, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> that's crazy. His siblings and I, we just kind of watched him beat song after song after song. So that was pretty cool. My brother's influence was definitely like everything. They would pretty much introduce me to like every single game I played. The game that probably like pulled him in the most is World of Warcraft. I remember he would ask to play World of the Warcraft like nonstop. I don't think I ever knew I was like really good at video games until I played like World of Warcraft a lot. Once I started playing like other games, then I realized, okay, like I'm just pretty good at video games in general. It wasn't like, oh, well, I'll play long and then, you know, it's okay, Dad, you're learning. He would just slam you every time. Joe was gonna win. He wanted to win everything he played all the time by a margin. I just wanted to beat my brothers. That's all it was. I just wanted to see them lose. Halo, then Call of Duty came around. This is where it all started. Like, I just really want to play video games with my brothers. There's been a lot of games where it's like, okay, you're really good. Do I want to play with you anymore? Do I care to try? So it's just a little ridiculous. What song's next? Uh, well, a lot of times Joe didn't feel well. And so for him to go to school and not feel great, it was kind of a struggle. Joe had a pretty light immune system with his asthma. So anytime that somebody in school would get sick, Joe tended to get it but tenfold. And he would end up in the hospital for a week at a time, which meant a lot of recovery time. I had like 60 missed days in one year. So I did online. I could do my schoolwork at like three in the morning. So I'd like play video games and like do my schoolwork because his focus is here at home, his focus is also here at home. 
where he can just sit on the computer and do his class, drop into Tilted or whatever, you know. It was very easy for him to kind of multitask learning and learning. Online school isn't like the most beneficial thing you could probably do if you're trying to like go pro. And also like it just saves so much time, like it really does, but it also lacks like a social aspect. So like I kind of cut off my friends and stuff once I started doing online. I was worried about him in a sense. I was like, he isn't getting like the human interaction that I'm getting. But then I realized that he has so many friends online. That's when it like kind of eased my discomfort with it a little bit. I think he just likes his space. And I think he likes being able to have, you know, a sanctuary for himself to kind of just take a load off and do whatever he wants to do. He's got quite the setup because he's also got a fridge in there. He's got a microwave, so he doesn't really ever have to leave his room. And he's got his own wait staff here. So my husband will cook him a steak and take it up to him and knock on his door and make sure that he's taken care of. I am his personal chef. There is no doubt about it. I basically wait on him. I wait on him. I want to be supportive of what he needs and he needs to eat. Joe, I think, was the only one that like let me actually play with him. It was funny because you would think Joe would be the one like begging us to play, but I was actually the one begging him to play with me. Every like two kills, we would switch the controller, and it was like one of those things. And I'd like sit and watch him play World of Warcraft. Like, what is going on? I played sometimes, but then uh, when I would like actually start losing, I'd be like, Yo, you need to, you need to get in here. And for some reason, she thought it would be funny if she got me to play for the, like for her sometimes. So I did that like a couple times. The boys who I'd play were like, This is unreal. I'm like, I know, yeah, I'm the queen of video games. I remember very vividly, he was playing Call of Duty online with some people, and I remember I'm just I'm downstairs, I'm trying to use the computer, and I have no internet, and I'm like, What has happened? And I come up and people are just yelling. And it turns out like he had like pissed some kid off so he DDoSed us. Like just the fact that he was getting to that level where people are like mad at him for how good he is. I was like, oh yeah, that'll be, that'll be something. I was always too young to play competitively in most games I played. First money I ever made playing esports was definitely during CSGO. And I made like two grand or something like that. And I went to go tell my brother and my mom and stuff. And I just thought it was like insane. I had no idea how good he was until all of a sudden there was money involved. The first time he knocked on the door and said, I just made $2,800 last night. I was like, oh, okay. So at first when Joe was winning money, which was way before this, probably when he was 13 years old, we were not sure what was going on computer equipment would arrive and, you know, he was buying things and upgrading a little bit. I asked him, is this a thing? Are you gambling? Are you doing anything illegal? And he goes, no. Okay. Great. Of course, you know, the older brother reassured us it's all good, so we didn't hassle him too much about it. Well, he started gravitating towards video games before he was probably eight this is his thing, and his brothers assured me <laughs> that he's really good at this. Like, I'd always kind of been aware that he's having this upward momentum as far as the where he's been going. Like, I remember him talking to me about getting signed to maybe an H1Z1 team and things like that. I have like 4,600 hours in the game, which is like a lot. I was like really good. And then I quit H1 because the game died. So I went to go play Fortnite with my friends that had like already started playing Fortnite. I like got into the pro scene really fast because like I knew people from H1 that like had invites to the pro servers. My first duo ever was an H1 player, so we just played together. I started realizing like, wow, I have really good mechanics. Like that's what I found so fun about the game was just the building aspect. So I didn't really care about like anything else other than the building. During trios, I met a lot cool people that like were really good at the game and just kind of showed me a different way how to play and like a different mindset to have about the game. Like if you just take a second, watch your game back, see what you could have done better and like don't just like blame it on the game right away. Like you can actually become like one of the best, like you really can. Oh. I started playing trios with a few good and dubs actually. That's when I sort of realized, like, I'm gonna, I'm probably like a close to be like being a top pro in it. Your Fortnite World Champion, Booga! 
before World Cup qualifiers even started, and like I knew Buga, we were cool. Like he knew of me, I knew of him. Like we were friends, but we, it wasn't really anything more than that until like trios. He was always better than me, like always. But I ended up getting like really good. Then like he tried to convince me to play with him in trios, him in dubs, and I mean Buga ended up syncing like really really well. Like our chemistry was really really good. Then we stopped playing with dubs, got clarity. Then in trios, we ended up popping off. We were like, probably the best trio. Under, under, under. Oh, wait, look we could maybe drop yeah. on that guy. We could maybe One kid has nomads, he has nomads. Bro, feel not. Nice. These kids are practicing all the time. You know, dancers will, will practice five hours a day, but this kid's up here, I don't even know how, I don't know how many hours a day he's actually playing. He's perfecting his game and, you know, looking at the science of it and doing all these things. So he takes it so seriously. This is not just fun and games to him. This is pretty serious stuff. If anyone was going to be a competitive gamer, I would have assumed it was Joe, just because of the level he was doing it all the time. Ever since he started getting a lot more attention and playing with, you know, some bigger names, it feels like everyone has started, you know, laser beam eye focus onto him for sure. And then one day out of the blue, he came downstairs and he said, Mom, I have something I want you to look at a contract. And I said, for what? And that was kind of the point where it all started moving pretty quickly and pretty rapidly about how good he was at gaming. Let's talk Fortnite. In TL fashion, we need to be signing the best. There's this player that's just been standing out so much to me. His name is Stretch. He's actually in part of a trio with Booga. He's super knowledgeable. He's making calls. He's insane at building. Very excited that we reached out. He had offers on the table already. He's 16. His mom knows that he is very gifted. Like He's very good at video games. They're super, super, super supportive. I think we should absolutely move on this. I remember there being a lot of talk about, hey, I'm getting, you know, sent a contract from this group or this group, but I really want to play for like Team Liquid. I mean, I, I knew about Team Liquid like way before because I still follow esports. Like Team Liquid was always like my dream team. Like I was gonna sign like day before I got hit up by Team Liquid, and then I just dropped everything. When it comes to esports, Team Liquid is the really the only team I had ever heard of before Joe started playing Fortnite. When we first started talking to different organizations, that was how it was always framed. It's like liquid. When you say the words, you know, Team Liquid, to any person that knows video games, they're like, what? Like, no, what, Team Liquid? Whoa, like, that's crazy. So learning that and now kind of knowing um, really how much weight that holds. And like, it's crazy that it's come this far. Like, I didn't know how many Twitter followers he had. And I didn't know how many Twitch followers he had. It's kind of crazy. Like, I finally took it upon myself to investigate. He's kind of, he's got a fan base, for sure. You know what's funny? I don't think it's money anymore. Like, he's chasing championships, not money. So if you're going to play Joe for real, there's no mercy. In NA, I consider myself probably one of the best team players. Like, I'm really good at duos, trios, and squads. I'm really good at team game modes, and I'm really good at working with a team and just like adapting really fast. Like if a new meta comes out, I'm really fast at like picking it up and figuring out what the best way to win is. Still really like trying to be the best. Like that's all I really care about. We're so proud of him and like everything that he has done. I could never do what Joe does, so yeah, it's pretty amazing to watch him play. I could do stingers for you. Like this kid's dexterity has always been wild. His hand-eye coordination's been crazy for years. Strength, perseverance, he's got it all. To be honest, all throughout like the video games I've played, it was never really about the game, just like the competitive aspect of it. A game could be boring to me, but if it had a good competitive scene, like I would still play it, just to like try to be the best. I just want to win, that's all I want to do.